tonight we are doing it from our office in Leesville, South Carolina. We have a customer out here that has a load of produce on that has to go to Virginia in the morning and he needed some emergency work done so we're still at work so we're going to do it here from the office and uh, I hope that you will enjoy it let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer gracious heavenly father Lord we thank you for this day we thank you for the opportunity Lord of uh, being on Facebook here and Lord preaching the word and reading the word Lord we ask you that you would uh, touch those that are sick that are ill Lord, uh, watch over all of my relatives, cousins, nieces, nephews, aunts, and uncles, and brothers, sisters, and my great-granddaughter, Nancy, Lord, you know, what a blessing she is. And I just pray now that you'd help us and as we go through the word. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray and ask these things. Amen. All right, a little jazzy wazzy here is going to sing a song. Hey, song. Amen. That better or can we relate like here? Alright. <laughs> I love to tell the story of unseen things above. Of Jesus and his glory. Of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longings as nothing else can do. I love to tell the story. Twill be my theme and glory. To tell the old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story more wonderful it seems than all the golden fancies of all my golden dreams. I love to tell the story, it did so much for me, and that is just the reason I tell it now to thee. I love to tell the story, twill be my theme and glory. To tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story, tis pleasant to repeat. What seems you shine, I tell it, more wonderfully sweet. I love to tell the story, for some have never heard the message of salvation from God's unholy word. I love to tell the story, will be my theme in glory. To tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story for those who know it best. See hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest. And when in scenes of glory I sing that new, new song, will be the old, old story that I have loved so long. I love to tell the story, will be my theme in glory. To tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. 
everybody. Thank you there, Jasmine. We're going to see here if we can uh, play one here by Billy Kelly. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can hear it out there. got your Bibles, please turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 3. We're going to look at two people in John, chapter 3 and John, chapter 4. We're going to look at a religious Pharisee, a lawyer, uh, one of the, I guess you'd call the upper crust, the uh, The goody two shoes. And then we're going to look at an old whore. And you know what they needed? They both needed Jesus. Didn't matter how good the Pharisee was, how much he knew about God, he needed the Lord Jesus Christ just as much as the Samaritan woman in chapter 4. So in chapter 3 and verse 1, it says there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. It said the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. He's trying to puff the Lord up. Amen. But Jesus went straight to the problem. He Remember, he came by night because he didn't want to be seen by the other Pharisees. And it says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, in the Bible, in the Gospels, it speaks of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven was a physical kingdom that was given to the Jews. And it had ordinances and feast days and sacrifices and different things they had to do. But the kingdom of God, the Bible says, is within you. For the kingdom of God cometh not with observation, but is within you. And so he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Why? It's a spiritual kingdom. And after you get born again, you can understand, you can see. 
Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, that's the natural physical birth, you know, what happens to a woman when she's about to give birth, her water breaks. And said, Born of the water and of the Spirit, and that's capital S, that's the Holy Ghost, amen. He says, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. He said, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. I've had people say, I'm not believing nothing I can't see. I'm not believing in anything I can't see. I says, when's the last time you saw the wind? They never saw the wind. They saw the effects of the wind. They saw a paper blowing down the street. They saw a leaf blowing on a tree. They see the trees bending with the wind. But they've never seen the wind. Amen. So that's garbage anyway. When a person gets born again, the kingdom of God is within you. And what they see is the effects of it. It changes your life. The things that you once loved, you begin to hate. The things that you hated, you begin to love. Amen. So there's a change in your nature. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know and testify that we have seen. And you receive not our witness. If I had told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And so he told Nicodemus, he said, you got to be born again. And I believe Nicodemus did get born again. But he goes on here, here's another interesting fact in John chapter 3. He says this, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Well, what happened over in Numbers in chapter 21 and, and, and verse 9? Well, the people had sinned, a great sin. And God sent fiery serpents among the people. And they were biting them, and they were dying. And they went to Moses and asked him to intercede for them. Moses went to the Lord, and the Lord said, Make a brass serpent. And put them on a pole. And tell those that get bit. If they look to that serpent on the pole. The brass serpent. They could live. He says here. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the son of man be lifted up. Now he's speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. On the cross of Calvary. So you've got to look to the cross of Calvary. To Jesus Christ and his shed blood for salvation. <laughs> Excuse me. And he said. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world. Why? Because we're already under the condemnation of the law of God before we get saved. And he says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. By the way, an interesting fact here, that serpent on the pole, that is a medical symbol. If you look on your ambulances, uh, on your hospital, on the, the facade of the hospitals, you'll see a winged serpent on a pole. That's a sign of healing. If the atheists ever figure it out, they'll probably try to get that taken off the ambulances and off the off of the hospitals. Amen? That's that serpent on the pole at uh, Numbers chapter 21. Amen. Go back and read it. Verse 18, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is condemnation, that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. You notice that everything that a sinner does, they usually try to do it in the dark. You know, the first time... Uh, uh, you ever got in the back seat of a car with a young man or a young man took you in a car and 
You all went and parked somewhere. You know when it was? At night. You go to the bars and the dance halls. They got the lights turned down so low. It's dark. If you ever went in there in the daytime and saw those floors and everything in the daylight, you'd probably get sick and never go back. Amen. Puking on the floor. Beer spilled everywhere. Amen. So man loved darkness rather than light. Why? Because his deeds were evil. When do the thieves and the meth heads around here, when do they come in to steal from us and offer our equipment out here at the shop? They do it at night under the cover of darkness. Amen. Why? Because their deeds are evil. Man tries to hide his sin. But you know the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Behold the evil and the good. God says that the, the, that the night is as the noonday to him. He sees everything. You can't hide from him. You can go in your bedroom, shut off your lights, get under your covers, turn on your phone, look at some uh, pornography or whatever on your phone. God still sees what you're doing. You can't hide from him. Amen. And you know what? He's got a book. He's got a record of what you're doing. You need to look and live. You need to be born again, as he told Nicodemus. He says, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. You know why people hate to come to church anymore? Because they know they're wicked sinners. They don't want to hear the word of God. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Now I want to go over here to chapter 4. Now we looked at this great religious leader, a ruler of the Jews, a, a Pharisee, amen, and the Lord told him that he needed to be born again. Now we go over here to chapter 4 and we're looking at the Samaritan woman. These are the people that because of the mixed marriages and stuff, the Jews didn't have any dealings with them. But Jesus did. He'll save us from the what they said, from the guttermost to the uttermost. You know, the Bible says that God lifted the needy out of the dung hill. If you don't know what dung is, that is excrement from an animal, amen, or from anybody really, but it's excrement. And he said he lifted us out of that dung hill. I liken it to a piece of corn in a pile of dung, amen. God had reached down there and pulled us out, made us kings and priests, Amen. And soldiers and sons unto himself. That's how much he cared for us. He says in chapter 4 and verse 1, When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground, that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey. Sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. <coughs> Excuse me. That's about noon. Then cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her. Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask a drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, Thou wouldst have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him, shall never thirst but the water that i shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life you know in another place the bible says that out of our belly would flow rivers of living water this make you the spirit that should be given unto them that believe the woman saith unto him sir give me this water that i thirst not neither come hither to draw 
Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. She was a whorish woman. She's with the fifth husband. And it's not even the husband. She shacked up. And the woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet, you think? Our fathers worship in this mountain. You say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is other Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And it's true, God is a spirit, but he manifests himself in three bodily persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost for the work of redemption. Amen. You see, it's hard to understand that and see that unless you've been born into the kingdom of God or the kingdom of God is within you. Because except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. All these things become very clear and come to light when you get born again. Amen. Religion won't show it to you. He says, the woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he has come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. There she is talking to the very God that created her. The very God that even created uh, Jacob who dug the well. The one who made the well. Amen. And there she is speaking to him. And he says, I that speak unto thee am he. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? Now look at this. The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, What men? Those five other men. Come see a man. Think about that. Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. Now listen. When she got there and told him, come see a man that told me everything that I ever did. They had to know that if he told her everything that she had done, they knew about him, them too. Amen. But what's the first thing she did? She went to witness to somebody else. She went to tell her friends and the people she cared about. Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Think about that. The Lord Jesus Christ cared just as much, just as much about that old woman in Samaria that's had all them men as he did about that Pharisee that came to him by night. And you know what? If you're sitting here tonight and you're listening, you're not saved. God cares just as much about you as he did about them, as he cared about me or anyone else that's been born again. Amen. Now let me show you something. I got a few minutes left there. Let's go over to Romans in chapter 2. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. I'll get everything off the desk here. <laughs> I want to begin in verse 10. This is what the Bible has to say about us. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Did you catch that? There is, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. You can find that in Psalm 14, verse 1 through 3. Isaiah 53, but you realize not you, not your mama, not your grandmama, not your children. There is none righteous, no, not one. 
There is none that understand it. There is none that seeketh after God. You, you said, but I sought God. I said the same thing. I was looking for God when I got out of the truck on the side of the road that early one morning while it was still dark on Interstate 20 in Georgia and asked Jesus to come to my heart and thought I was saved. I thought I was seeking God. And when I saw this verse, I said, no, I sought God. No, God was seeking me. God was putting a desire in me to seek him. But he was doing the seeking first. Amen. Three years later, we truly got born again. He says, they are all gone out of the way. They're all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. That is a grave. With their tongues, they have used deceit. We were lying from our mother's womb. The Bible says that we're all liars. All men are liars. And he says, with their tongues, they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips. It's just that venom. You ever seen a, or maybe you yourself, just get in an argument with your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. And boy, you just get so mean and nasty and cursing. Venom, amen, venom. It says whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery in their ways and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now look at verse 19. You remember a while back we said that this law was the schoolmaster in Galatians chapter 3. It was to teach us about what we are. It says the law is a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. But you know, as long as you're proclaiming your own goodness, well, I'm not really that bad. I'm not as bad as that drunk on the streets in New York. I'm not as bad as that old whore down there in the whorehouse in South Carolina. I, I'm not that bad. But look what he says here about the law in verse 19. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, why? That every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. The law was to shut your mouth. The Bible says there's none that doeth good. There's none that seeketh after God. There's none righteous. No, not one. He says their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery in their ways. You ever see a couple of lost people, a husband or wife, just get into a, a, a fight in their home over something and just curse and cuss each other and I wish you were dead and all that. That's that old wicked sinful nature that God wants to make new. But it, you'll forget about that and then you'll be going, but I'm not as bad as that person over there. I might be bad, but I'm not as bad as so-and-so. Listen, you have the same problem that every other lost sinner has. You're on your way to hell if you don't have Christ. And the law is to shut your mouth. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, yet offend in one point, is guilty of all. And the Bible says all men are liars. Amen. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest of being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith, look at this, of Jesus Christ. Remember, we went over that last night. Unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. Whether it was the rich Pharisee Nicodemus or the lowly woman at the well from Samaria, for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. Amen. If you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, why don't you pray and ask Him to save you tonight? We thank you for listening. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. And hopefully this truck out here will be fixed and running so we can get out of here tonight. Grace, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be on here tonight. I pray, Father, that you were honored and glorified by the word of God. And Lord, we pray that you touch hearts and spirits as you see fit. For it's in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we ask these things. Amen. All right. God bless you. Have a good evening. Hope to see you. In church tomorrow night. Amen. Amen.